You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, we've got some breaking news here. Trump's big Hail Mary play in the Manhattan criminal trial, that's his first trial, has been denied. So talk about what Judge Mershon just did. Brian, we are as close as we've ever been to seeing the first criminal trial against Donald Trump kick off on April 15th because the presiding judge, Judge Juan Mershon, just denied Donald Trump's last ditch attempt to delay the commencement of his trial. What did Donald Trump do? He filed a motion saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, I've got this absolute presidential immunity claim kicking around in the federal system. I want to assert it here, and I want you to delay my New York state court prosecution um, in order to await what, you know, to see what the Supreme Court does with this whole presidential immunity claim. And here is what Judge Mershon did. It really was a thing of beauty. He looked to the New York law. He said, under the New York state law, you have 45 days after the day you are arraigned to raise and file all motions. Now, over time, you can ask the court to perhaps raise some motions a little bit later. If, for example, you just come into some new information that makes you think you might have a new motion to file. But here is what Judge Mershon said on the timing front of this motion. Mind you, 45 days from the date of arraignment, Donald Trump was arraigned in New York on April 4th, 2023. What does that mean? He had to file all his motions by May 19th, 2023. We're talking about almost a year ago now. And <laughs> yeah. the other thing that Judge Mershon does is he catalogs every single time Donald Trump has filed something, albeit in other courts, raising presidential immunity. He was doing it a year ago. So you can't really say this just occurred to Donald Trump to raise it in his right. New York trial. So here's what Judge Mershon said in denying Donald Trump's motion. He said the defendant waited a mere 17 days prior to the scheduled trial date of March 25th. That was the last trial date before it got kicked to April 15th. He waited a mere 17 days to file the motion, and that raises real questions about the sincerity and actual purpose <laughs> of the motion. Brian, if I could translate that from judge speak to real people speak is, uh, hey, Donald Trump, you did this for the purposes of delay, and I'm not going to fall for it. You're going to trial in a couple of weeks. Now, just for posterity here, because I feel like I know the answer, but does he have the ability to, d to appeal this decision to anybody? He does have the ability. Now, will it be a successful appeal? Brian, why did he wait until 17 days before the trial date? Because he was hoping that once it was rejected by Judge Mershon, he could appeal it up through the New York State Appellate Court system. It will be denied. It will be denied. Then he'll try to seek review in the United States Supreme Court God help us if the Supreme Court grants review and says, even though, you know, this is a state court case, this is a different jurisdiction, this is a different sovereign, and we don't control what goes on in state courts, who knows what this Supreme Court might do? Might they say, look, we are already taking up this issue in connection with Donald Trump's federal prosecution in Washington, D.C., for trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. So we are going to bring Donald Trump's state court prosecution to a screeching halt, and we are going to force that case to await the outcome of our resolution of the federal issue in Donald Trump's DC prosecution. I hope to heck they don't do that. I would not bet my full buck on them not doing it, but I don't think they are likely to wade into the state court prosecution. So I do think we're going to see our first criminal trial of Donald Trump commence on April 15th. Well, just digging into that a little bit, who determines if and when this thing gets appealed, whether the case stops while we await the decision on that appeal? So if there is a successful appeal, um, because immunity is the kind of an issue that is a case dispositive issue. What do I mean by that? Right. If any appellate court said, you know what? We think Donald Trump is immune from prosecution. Well, then frankly, he shouldn't be prosecuted because 
immunity is a real thing, just not for a president. There's no such thing as absolute presidential immunity, no law, no appellate court precedent, no constitutional provision. But immunity, generally speaking, is a real thing. You know, I've granted witnesses immunity so I could compel them to testify. And if you grant somebody immunity, then the prosecution has no right prosecuting that person. We have no right even initiating a prosecution and putting them through the rigors of, for example, the pretrial run-up to a prosecution. But the thing is, Donald Trump doesn't have a viable claim, even though the Supreme Court has taken it up. He doesn't have a claim that is based in the law. So ordinarily, all of these issues have to wait for purposes of being appealed until after the case is over. A defendant has been convicted, sentenced, then he can raise all of his issues on appeal with the exception, very limited number of exceptions, like immunity. If somebody actually has immunity, that's the kind of thing that can sort of grind the trial to an immediate halt while the appellate court sorts out the immunity issue. What about the elephant in the room here, Glenn? Donald Trump wasn't even president when these crimes were committed. This was during the campaign. So how in the world would he have presidential immunity while he was a candidate for president? Brian, you'd make one heck of a lawyer because he wouldn't <laughs> is the answer. Now, here's what he's going to claim. He's going to claim that, well, you know what? In the event I did anything wrong, I was continuing my criminal course of conduct while I was president. Why? Because I was writing Michael Cohen, my co-conspirator, reimbursement checks because he's the one who made the hush money payments for me at my direction and for my benefit. And after I got, got elected, my criminal course of conduct continued because I was writing checks out of the Oval Office to reimburse my co-conspirator for the payments he made. So therefore, you know what? Some of my conduct, I'm not admitting to it. I'm not saying it was criminal, not saying it's wrong, but some of my conduct was certainly committed during my time as president. Therefore, I should just have absolute immunity for everything I did before, during, and let's throw in after I was president. Only Donald Trump could figure out a way to commit crimes during the presidency and somehow decide that that redounds to his ultimate benefit, that that should, that should be grounds to protect him even more. Just utter insanity. Glenn, did anything stand out to you about Judge Mershon's order here? I, I think the, um, it, it was so definitive and um, he made it clear that he's not going to permit Donald Trump to play games with the rules, procedures, and laws of New York. You know, lesser judges might have flinched and said, oh, maybe I should take up this issue anyway. In an abundance of caution, Judge Mershon said no. And he very politely um, said, I think you're playing games here because you could have raised it when you filed your motion 45 days after you were, were arraigned. In this case, he also said, you know what? Remember, uh, Defendant Trump, when you tried to get this case removed from state court to federal court, that was back in 2023. You talked about presidential immunity then. You could have raised that motion in these very proceedings and you declined to. So everything that I saw in there screamed. Judge Mershon's got Donald Trump's number and he will not flinch, nor will he do any favors or treat Donald Trump any differently than he would treat any other defendant who was before him. Glenn, aside from what we all hope is a very doomed effort to delay this trial through presidential immunity, is there anything else that could possibly delay this trial? In this case, there is nothing else that, in my opinion, could successfully derail the trial date. Here's what I predict we may see next. We may see Donald Trump try to fire his lawyers. The reason I say we may see that is because I encountered that many times as a career federal prosecutor. When all else had failed, a defendant on the eve of trial or in the immediate run up to trial would say, Judge, I have fired my defense attorney because we have irreconcilable differences. He or she is ineffective. I need a new counsel. And by the way, because I need a new counsel, that new counsel is going to need about six months to get up to speed on this case before we go to trial. Here's the thing. The Sixth Amendment says a defendant has a right to counsel, has a right to zealous counsel, has a right to unconflicted counsel, but does not have a right to counsel of his or her choosing. And that's why a judge under those circumstances can deny 
a defense attorney's request to withdraw from representation because the client has fired him. The judge can deny that motion and say, we are proceeding to trial. Any disagreements you have with your client are between the two of you. We're going to trial. But that is one of okay. the last ditch efforts I could see Donald Trump making to try to avoid his trial commencing on, on April 15th. Can you contrast Judge Mershon's decision to just swat down definitively, as you said, swat down this frivolous motion about presidential immunity? Can you contrast that with the fact that the Supreme Court opted to hear this case, decided that they needed to hear this issue despite its glaring baselessness? You know, I really can't. I, I have come to believe, and I take no pleasure in saying this, that the Supreme Court is no longer an honest broker of the law. Certainly the right-wing block of the Supreme Court. Um, when you look at the claim of presidential immunity, not only is there no law, no precedent, and no constitutional provision supporting the notion that a president is absolutely immune from being prosecuted for crimes he commits against the people of the United States while in office, but the Constitution provides the exact opposite. In the impeachment judgment clause, it says, and I'm summarizing here, even if a president is impeached and convicted in the Senate and removed from office, he can still be prosecuted for the same conduct that got him impeached. How in the world does anybody argue that that language conveys that a president can never be prosecuted? It conveys the exact opposite. So why the Supreme Court decided to bog things down, bring Donald Trump's a uh, criminal prosecution in D.C. to a screeching halt. And remember, that was set for trial on March 4th. And now we have no idea when it will be tried. And we certainly don't know if it will be tried before the November presidential election. But unfortunately, the Supreme Court has exposed itself as not really having any allegiance to the law or the Constitution. Let's finish off with this. Glenn, walk us through the timeline of what to expect starting on April 15th now. Yeah, so I think the projection is um, jury selection could take as much as two weeks. And then I would expect once a jury is sworn, and that's when Jeopardy attaches, um, you're probably going to have a presentation of the evidence by the government, what we call the government's case in chief, that will last perhaps two to three weeks, maybe a little longer. We will have a defense presentation that will probably last less than a week. And then closing arguments and the case will go to the jury. A jury can deliberate one hour, one day, one week, one month. You can never tell how long a jury is going to take to resolve a case and return verdicts. But I think we could see Donald Trump as a convicted felon by perhaps late May or early June. OK, and that'll obviously be important for voters going out to the polls to know whether they're going to be casting a ballot for a convicted felon or not. Seems seems important to me. With that said, obviously, Glenn and I will be continuing to follow along any of these prosecutions as they play out. For those watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.